Um, any questions? I just have one question. You know, so you know, when people started the lymph node transplant early on, they never thought about it causing secondary lymphedema until it became more popular and more people are doing it, they start identifying problems. And because of that, now a lot of people are starting to do omentum. And as you mentioned, omentum is a policeman of the abdomen. Obviously, he has some, he must have some important role to have such a big organ there. So including immunologic and all those things. And uh, we do know that the complications such as pancreatitis, small bowel obstruction are there. But um, I wonder, what is the long-term implication of removing momentum, if anybody even know? Would it, would it result in a patient's having higher incidence of pelvic infections, diverticulitis, or things like that? It'd be, it'd be interesting to know from five years from now, as you're doing more and more cases, because there are some studies that show that small bowel obstruction, which can occur with any intra-abdominal surgery, when you take momentum out, actually, it, it's higher because it doesn't have the protective effect. So um, I, think th I think this is great. I think, uh, but again, these are things that we will be looking at further, and uh, hopefully we'll have better answers in the future. Yeah, just to respond to Dr. Chang's question, I think that's a legitimate concern. And that's why I think it's important not to skip that step of mapping that lymphosome of the right side when you're doing a unilateral uh, transfer. That way you can save the left side. And it's, I still leave it floating. I actually leave the, uh, retro, the uh, gastric apron intact nowadays. So I just I map it and I find that lymphosome, find those lymph lakes, and just grab that flap only. And then leave the rest intact, leave it viable with the left side so that uh, we still have a reserve if you developed a peptic ulcer disease or something. I can just, just briefly tell you my complications with the omentum. We've had uh, one bout early on of pancreatitis when we first started, um, and that's because there are a lot of big, juicy lymph nodes by the pancreas, and in the desire to get a good effect, we took them. Uh, we didn't injure the pancreas, but inflammation near the pancreas from, surg from surgical healing can aggravate it. Um, it was temporary for one week, but certainly miserable and would never want that complication again. So I think anytime uh, all of us are working on a frontier, um, there, is an, uh, there is a level of unknown, and it's very important to discuss complications. I'm glad you brought it up, David. And it's something we discuss openly with the patients. Um, and it's not for everybody. It's definitely not for a patient who is kind of on the fence. Um, I wouldn't offer anything that I wouldn't have done to myself. So I'm a surgeon. If somebody was taking all of my axillary lymph nodes, I'd have Dr. Marara take a portion of my omentum and put in my axilla because it would be a, uh, the end of my career. Um, the equation's different for everybody. Um, the other two complications we've had at the donor site are two episodes of ileus. We were not using NG tubes, and perhaps we'll use them. We haven't seen... Uh, the need in the vast majority of patients, but one patient did require post-op NG tube, which was pulled the next day. Um, so perhaps we should be using NG tubes on everybody, although NG tubes are kind of, I've had them, they're, they're uh, not fun. But, um, but basically that's it. We haven't had any major bleeding, we haven't had um, any bowel obstruction and so forth, but I think we do have to follow our patients long-term to know. Dr. Bucardo? Can I give two suggestions to try to reduce uh, donor site mobility? Uh, for um, supraclavicular flap, I would suggest to use uh, fatty meal uh, because when we operate for chylosocytes, chylothorax, chyluria, uh, when it is uh, chylos vessels that you have to manage, uh, we use the fatty meal. So you can see it is a sort of uh, reverse chylos mapping. You give uh, six, uh, 60 grams of butter melted in uh, a cup of milk at uh, three uh, during the night. And in the morning, you can see the callous vessels white. So maybe in this way, you can try to, to manage this kind of uh, morbidity. For groin uh, and for axillary, I would suggest to use lymphatechnic if you want. You just inject the blue dye at the arm or at the thigh you harvest your flap, and if you see some blue lymphatics come into the flap, you can do a lymphatic venous anastomosis, so you can reduce the morbidity of a, a secondary lymphedema in the donor site. So maybe this can be a few suggestions to try to reduce donor site morbidity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Picardo. I would just add, I'd, I'd probably be a little concerned about injecting blue dye and seeing a lymphatic going into the lymph node 
that I, I wouldn't take the lymph node out to begin with, and I wouldn't rely on a micro lymphatic ovenous anastomosis, even in the best of hands, there's uh, long-term patency rates that have been reported in the 30 to 50 percent range. So I think um, the reason we don't use blue dye is because with a technetium, we can detect that far away from the node. We can stay far away. With a blue dye, you really have to be right on top of the lymphatic or the lymph node. But I think whatever technique you do, you do, you do need to image what you're actually taking, for sure. But I, I love the the fatty um, fatty meal. Professor Cheng. I have a question for Alex. Uh, since you show a case that you transfer omentum flat to axilla and fail, the one of the major drawbacks for omentum different law is no skin pad for monitoring. And I, I want to ask uh, how is your series of the uh, failure rate of the omentum transfer to axilla? And what is the reason? Thank you. Um, so the axilla one was actually in the inner arm. Uh, I just feel like uh, for those breast cancer patients that uh, you're, I really want to put it where the functional problem is. So, um, so as far as failures, I've uh, Dr. Chang's been involved with me when he was gracious enough to let me operate with him, but we did have one take back on that. Uh, I've had one complete flap failure, which was from uh, venous hypertension. Then I've had uh, three other take backs for just questions, uh, whether it was the implantable Doppler fell off or it got purple, those are my concerns. Um, again, like the drawbacks is it doesn't have a skin paddle. So all the residents and fellows are looking, they're used to seeing skin paddles from deep flaps, but you see Omentum, and I, I put a, a, a monitoring window there, but it evolves. The monitoring window evolves, it, you have blood leaking out, it turns purple, it turns pink, it, it, there's all these things that change, and that's why it's, it's very difficult to monitor. So it, it, that, is, that is a problem. That's why I use belts and suspenders as far as follow-up, and then, of course, as you guys know, the implantable doppers change too. So.